Before we dive in, here's a clinical question for you. Hold your answer. We'll discuss it at the end of this video. Portal hypertension means increased pressure in the portal venous system. It becomes clinically significant when portal venous pressure exceeds 10 to 12 millimeters of mercury. The main mechanism is increased resistance to portal blood flow at the level of the sinusoids. Cirrhosis is the most common cause. Fibrosis and regenerative nodules distort hepatic architecture and obstruct portal flow. There is also a hyperdynamic circulation. Splanchnic arteries dilate due to excess nitric oxide, increasing portal inflow and worsening portal hypertension. Let's divide this into prehepatic, intrahepatic, and posthepatic. Prehepatic causes include portal vein thrombosis, malignancy, and compression from pancreatic tumors. Intrahepatic causes include cirrhosis, schistosomiasis, and Wilson's disease. Posthepatic causes include bud Chiari syndrome, right-sided heart failure, and constrictive pericarditis. Because of high portal pressure, blood bypasses the liver and forms collateral channels, a process called portosystemic shunting. Esophageal varices form when blood flows from the left gastric vein into the azygos system and may rupture, causing massive hematemesis. Hemorrhoids occur through communication between the superior rectal and inferior rectal veins. Caput medusae appear at the umbilicus due to dilation of para-umbilical veins. Splenomegaly develops from venous congestion and may cause hypersplenism with thrombocytopenia. Ascites forms due to increased hydrostatic pressure and activation of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Impaired estrogen metabolism causes gynecomastia, palmar erythema, spider angiomas, and testicular atrophy. Jaundice may appear from poor bilirubin clearance. Ultrasound with Doppler assesses portal vein flow and detects collateral channels. Upper gastrointestinal endoscopy identifies esophageal varices. Serum ascites albumin gradient, greater than 1.1 grams per deciliter, suggests portal hypertension. The goal is to treat complications and reduce portal pressure. For varices without bleeding, use non-selective beta blockers such as propranolol or natalol, or perform endoscopic varicel ligation. For ascites, stop alcohol, restrict sodium, and use diuretics. Start with spironolactone and add furosemide after correcting hypokalemia. Perform large volume paracentesis for tense ascites with albumin replacement. Spontaneous bacterial peritonitis is diagnosed when acidic fluid has more than 250 neutrophils per cubic millimeter. Send the fluid for culture, then start intravenous cefotaxim. Refractory cases may require tips. The transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt to decompress the portal system. Liver transplantation is definitive in end-stage disease. Now let's go back to our clinical question. The answer is option B. The obstruction lies before blood reaches the liver, increasing portal pressure despite a normal hepatic parenchyma. In short, portal hypertension results from increased resistance and increased inflow within the portal circulation. It leads to varices, ascites, splenomegaly, and systemic features of liver dysfunction. Understand the mechanisms and you'll remember the complications for life. This is the Y-Medic, simplifying hepatology. Subscribe for more high-yield topics.